Hi, in this video we wanted to show you some of the new features now available in ScreenSteps 2.7. We've just released this, we're really excited about it, and we think you're really going to love it. The first thing we want to show you is a new export to clipboard option. So if I take a lesson in here and say, for example, I want to email this lesson out to somebody, I can now use the export to clipboard option, select HTML, and open my mail client, my desktop mail client, in my case, Mac OS X Mail, and then just select Edit, Paste, and I have a new HTML email message with all of my lesson content, images and text and annotations all in there. I can now instantly send this out to someone, and I've got a great either how-to or bug report, whatever it is that I'm trying to communicate visually with this message. And this will work with any email client that will accept HTML pasted from the system clipboard. So we've tested this with Mac OS X and Outlook, and you can use both of those email clients. But you may have an email client or application that won't accept HTML content from the system clipboard. You also have another option. Select Clipboard, PDF, and this will export a PDF file to the system clipboard. Now I will create a new message in Mail and hit Paste, and it pastes in a PDF file of the lesson I just created. This is also very handy if you're emailing bug reports into a help ticketing system. Many times help ticketing systems will mangle HTML email, separating the images from the actual text. By copying a PDF file to the system clipboard and sending that in your email, you'll make sure that all of your information stays together. The reason we explain this is ScreenSteps is a great tool for reporting bugs. Uh, the bug reports that we get that our customers send in where they've used screen steps to show us the bug or the problem are so much easier to diagnose than the ones that are just text descriptions and emails. So this is a great application for using the export to clipboard option. But you can do a lot more with export to clipboard. You don't have to just create emails with it. You can now get your screen steps content into any application that will accept HTML content from the clipboard. So here's another example. This is Evernote, which is a popular note gathering application. I'm going to go back to my lesson export it to the clipboard, come into Evernote, create a new note, and then just select Edit Paste. And all of my lesson content is now a new note in Evernote. This will be synced with their servers so I can view it on my iPhone or other mobile device or on my PC, all the services that Evernote syncs with. This is a great way to capture knowledge, so you can capture the information you need in your screen steps lesson, then it's there for you to retrieve whenever you need it. Another example is OmniFocus. It's a getting things done application. You can create a new task, such as uh, fix this bug, and maybe you've created a screen steps lesson where you outline exactly what the bug is, and so you want to document that, so when you come back to do this task, you have laid out exactly what you need to fix. Well, you can just, in the notes section, paste in the HTML, and you've got all of that content right there. So as you can see, just in what I've been showing you, you have a wide variety of options with the new Export to Clipboard feature. Uh, one last example of this, if I export a PDF to the clipboard, and say I want to upload that file to a web page, I'm going to come here, this is Backpack, uh, a popular web application. I'll select Choose File, and on Mac, what you do is you just hit Command Shift G, and that brings up a little dialog box where you can now hit Command V. That will take you right to the file that you just created. Hit Choose and Upload, and you can instantly upload a PDF file to any website. On Windows, it's even a little bit easier. All you need to do is select the File Open dialog box and hit Control V, and the path to the PDF file will be put in there so you can attach the file to either an email message or upload it to a website, whatever it is you need to do. We've also added drop shadows and smart annotation selection. So you can see here all of my annotations now have a drop shadow on them. If you want to add these to your existing annotations, just double click on the annotation, which will bring up the inspector palette, and check this drop shadow box. We've also added smart annotation selection. It used to be if I had a rectangle and then I wanted to reposition this sequence notation, I would have to go select either the sequence tool or the select tool to do that. Now Screen Steps is smart about what you're doing, you can select any type of annotation and reposition it on the screen without having to switch tools. It makes it much easier to work with your annotations. We've also made dramatic improvements to the search functionality. So now you can 
not only search in the lesson library, but you can also search within manuals themselves. And this is very handy, not only for finding lessons in your manual, but also for managing your workflow. If you use the status check marks, you can now filter your library or your lesson by those status check marks. So I can come in here and see all the lessons that are not finished or need revision. And this basically becomes a to-do list for me. I can see all the lessons that are marked with not finished needs revision. And as I edit this lesson and then complete it, it disappears from my list. So this becomes a great way to manage your workflow. If you need to reset your search, just hit the yellow X and your search results will be cleared out. You can also easily find all of your draft lessons. We've also added a tag palette. So if I come up here to show tag palette, this gives me a list of all the tags in my library. I can take these tags and drag them onto existing lessons to easily tag lessons from the table of contents. I can also create new tags right here using the new tag button. You can also use the tag palette to search. So say for example, I want to get all of my lessons that are tagged with getting started. I can just drag that up into the search field and that will perform a search for me. Maybe I also want to see the ones that have the screen steps to tag with them. Add that and it will further filter my results. We also want to show you that we've added a new preference for HTML templates that lets you set the maximum image width for your template. You used to have to go into the template file and modify this. Now you can just do it right in the preferences editor. It's much easier. The biggest application for this is to find out the maximum width for your HTML template in your blog or your wiki or your HTML site, and then come in and set that pixel value right here in max image width. That'll make sure that your images don't go beyond the boundaries of the template that you're using. ScreenSteps also comes with a brand new set of HTML templates. You can see that they have a cleaner, more professional look that will make your ScreenSteps content look better than it ever has before. That's it for this video. We'll be releasing some more in the upcoming weeks that will show you new and exciting ways that you can use ScreenSteps in your daily workflow to do much more than just create tutorials. Thanks a lot.